Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And this world is full of darkness. Get out your King James Bibles and turn to the Old Testament. We're going to take a look at the book of Numbers, chapter 33. Verse 1, these are the journeys of the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt with their armies under the hand of Moses and Aaron. Isn't that interesting? These are the journeys of the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt with their armies under the hand of Moses and and Aaron. Ever remember the song, Onward Christian Soldiers? Whatever happened to that? Verse 2, And Moses wrote their goings out according to their journeys by the commandment of the Lord, and these are their journeys according to their goings out. And they departed from Ramses in the first month. Now, Ramses was just a uh, major city in Egypt. It was named after a pharaoh, Pharaoh Ramses, in the first month. Now, when you think of the first month, we're not talking about January. In the Hebrew calendar, the first month is in the spring. It's kind of an agricultural type deal. And the Passover had passed. You know, they had done the Passover, they sacrificed the lamb, they put the blood on the door so the death angel would pass over the destroyer, and they passed over the Hebrews' houses that had faith in the blood of the lamb. And you'll notice they didn't do Easter. The goddess of spring fertility, which is uh, Easter eggs and bunny rabbits, you know, uh, wasn't that what Hugh Hefner, uh, uh, he had a thing about bunnies, didn't he? Yeah, he must have married like 30 of them. I don't know. Uh, never mind, but I digress. But, uh, yeah, if you'll notice, I don't think, uh, and Christians will tell you, oh, well, you know, Easter is the resurrection of Christ after Passover. Well, the Bible says that Jesus was in the tomb three days and three nights, and then he rose again. So if he was crucified on or about Passover, Easter would have to be three days later, which I think since I've been paying attention, I've only seen it like maybe one time when it was three days and three nights after. It's almost never. I mean, it might be a week after. So Easter cannot possibly be the resurrection of Christ if we're going by the Hebrew calendar. And besides, Easter is the, the name of a goddess. She goes by Ishtar. Um, she's got a lot of different names. Matter of fact, she's called the Queen of Heaven. Oh, yeah. All right, let's take a look at Jeremiah chapter 7. We're going to go... Uh, Numbers is going to be our main chapter, but we're going to be skipping around a little bit. This is, uh, Jeremiah is a prophet who pronounced judgment and rebuke upon the people for things, doing things that the Lord told them not to do and their wickedness. So, Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word, and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah, that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. 
Well, evidently they didn't because uh, they all got carried off to Babylon. And uh, you know what's interesting is the, uh, the Babylonians came and destroyed the temple. And then when they came out of the Babylonian captivity, they rebuilt the temple. And then in the days of the Roman Empire in 70 AD, on the same exact day, the Roman armies came in and destroyed the temple again on the same exact day. I think God was sending the Jews a message. What do you think? Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if ye thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if ye thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods, plural, gods, plural, to your hurt, in other words, don't walk after Satan. Don't walk after Easter, Ishtar. Verse 7. Then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers, forever and ever. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery? And swear falsely? And burn incense under Baal? Baal, Baal, B-A-A-L. That's an interesting word. It, it basically means Lord. But it had become so associated with Satanism. I mean, let's face it. If you were a member of the Church of Satan, you could call Satan your Baal, your Lord. But it... That that word had become so associated with Satanism, God actually told his people, don't call me that anymore. Don't call me by that name. Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom ye know not, and come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. In other words, Monday through Saturday you serve the devil, and then on Sunday you go to church? Really? Really? And then say, oh, eternal security, once saved, always saved. You know, God doesn't want us to repent of our sins. He just wants us to believe on him. Really? And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations? Is this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Ooh, a den of robbers in your eyes. Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. All right, let's take a look at uh, a parallel verse. Mark chapter 11, verse 11. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. Oh yeah, he's going into his father's house. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple, and when he looked round about upon all things, and now the eventide was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow... When they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves. Now remember, fig tree is a symbol of Judah. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if haply he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. Oh yeah, he goes to the fig tree looking the symbol of Judah, looking for fruit, good fruit. But he found nothing. 
just leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Isn't that Judaism today? There is no fruit on the tree of Judaism today. All they can do is denigrate Christianity, the Greek New Testament, the name Jesus, and tell people to follow the Torah. Follow the Torah. We're Torah keepers. What about faith and grace? There's no fruit. I mean, let's face it. If the old, if you could have been saved by the Torah, Jesus wouldn't have had to come to earth. But they reject that. Verse 15. And they came to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the, ta the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. I would not suffer or allow, and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. Boy, I wish, I'd love to see that today. Have I would love to see Donald Trump throw out the money changers, but uh, that ain't going to happen. Uh, I think the last president that threw out the money changers was Andrew Jackson. And uh, if you read the, the about him, you'll say, oh, he was the worst president. Yeah, he was, the, he was one of the best presidents, if you ask me. He threw out the money, money changers, the money lenders. Verse 17, and he, Jesus, and he taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And the scribes and the chief priests heard it. Now, these are the Jewish priests. These are not Catholic priests. And the scribes and chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him. For they feared him because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. Ooh, they wanted to destroy him. And when even was come, he went out of the city, and in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Jesus cursed the fig tree, the symbol of Judah. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answering, saith unto them, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whatsoever ye shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shalt not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, whatso, uh, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive. Very important. Forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Ooh. I guess we ought to keep reading this. This is really good. And they come again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, there come to him the chief priests, the Jews, and the scribes and the elders, and say unto him, so here it is, the Jews come up to Jesus and they're going to say this, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority to do these things? In other words, who do you think you are? Verse 29, And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will also ask of you one question, and answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. And they reasoned within themselves, saying, 
If we shall say, From heaven, he will say, Why then did ye not believe him? But if we shall say of men, they feared the people, for all men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. And they answered and said unto Jesus, We cannot tell. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. Very interesting. All right, back to Jeremiah chapter 7. Let's go back to verse 9. Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense, and to Baal, and walk after other gods whom ye know not, and come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations? Is this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. But go ye now unto my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it, for the wickedness of my people, Israel. Yeah, Shiloh got their, uh, uh, they got judgment. <laughs> 13. And now, because ye have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not. And I called you, but ye answered not. In other words, I'm talking, but you're not listening. Verse 14. Therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto this place, which I give to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. And I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Read Jeremiah 3, verse, chapter 3, and verse 8. God divorced Israel, of which Ephraim was the major tribe. Divorced them. But God didn't divorce Judah. And uh, Ephraim's capital was Samaria. Judah's capital was Jerusalem. And I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Verse 16, listen to this. God is speaking to Jeremiah, the prophet, his servant, his faithful servant. Therefore, pray not thou for this people. Don't pray for them. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry, nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. In other words, don't you pray for them, don't you cry, don't make any prayers, don't make any intercessions, because I ain't going to hear it. I'm going to close my ears and go, na 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 Well, not exactly, but you get my drift. God's going to stick his fingers in his ears. He's not going to listen. He's not going to hear it. Oh, well, he's going to hear it, but he's not going to listen. He's going to ignore. Can you imagine how angry the Lord is? Tells his prophet, don't you dare pray for this people. Don't you dare pray for this people. Because I'm not going to hear you. Verse 17, Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? Listen carefully. The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough. That's, uh, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. The queen of heaven! and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Do you know what kneading dough is? That's when you, you, you take flour and you mix it with water and egg, and you know if you put raisins or dates or whatever you're going to put in the bread, and you, you mix, that's what kneading the dough is. You're mixing it up. The children gather wood, the fathers kindle the fire, the women knead their dough to make cakes, 
to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. Think about that the next time you go to a church and they have an Easter egg hunt for the children and bunny rabbits. Oh, those cute little bunny playboy rabbits, playboy bunnies, right? Hugh Hefner, right? That they may provoke me to anger. You know what really kills me? Churches will teach people not to do the things that the Lord wants. For example, the Lord's Supper. Jesus broke the bread, poured the wine. He says, do this in remembrance of me. You know, I think it was the day before the Passover. It could have been the Passover. I, I think it was the day before the Passover. The Last Supper. Jesus takes the bread and the wine. He says, take, eat. This is my body. This is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. My sacrifice on the uh, cross. And the churches will say, oh, you know, not all of them, but some of them will say, oh, well, you know, don't do that. You know, that's that's Old Testament. We're, we're New Testament Christians. Don't read the Old Testament. Of course, they won't read the New Testament either, but, you know, a lot of them. And, and they'll tell their people, well, if you do that, you're a legalist. You know, you're a legalist. If you do what the Bible says, you're a legalist. And then they'll explain away the things that the Bible says not to do and say that if, if you tell people not to do what the Bible says not to do, they'll... Uh, uh, they'll also call you a, a legalist. Oh, well, we've got grace. We, we've got freedom to do these things that the Lord hates. Really? You know what? There's a reason why God said, come out of Babylon. Because all this stuff comes out of Babylon. Ishtar was the queen of heaven of Babylon. You know, in, Bible, in, in the book of Revelation, when, when, when God said to come out of her, my people... Come out of Mystery Babylon? What do you think he's talking about? What do you think he's talking about here? And the women need their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man and upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. Doesn't that sound like what's going on in California? Oh, California is burning, people. It's been burning and burning and burning and burning. Wow. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices and eat flesh. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice. Obey my voice. The things I tell you to do, do. The things I tell you not to do, don't do it. Don't listen to a preacher that explains away the things the Lord tells you to do and then tells you you got a license to do the things under grace, the, the things that God says not to do. Obey my voice and I will be your God. And ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. But they hearken not, nor incline their ear. In other words, they didn't listen. But walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. 
Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. They're not going to listen. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. Cut off thine head, O Jerusalem, and cast it away, and take up a lamentation on high places, for the Lord hath rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. For the children of Judah have done evil, evil in my sight, saith the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name, to pollute it. And they have built the high places of Topheth, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. So they went to a high place. They're building a, a stairway to heaven, I guess, Led Zeppelin. Or was it the Tower of Babel or Babel? And they burned their sons and their daughters. Human sacrifice. They burned their children alive. People, that's Satanism. Satanism. Those of you with children, people keep an eye on your children. Satanists are kidnapping children and sacrificing them. You should take a look at September and October's kidnapping statistics. It skyrockets. They're kidnapping children and sacrificing them. They're vanishing. Keep an eye on your kids, people. And make sure you can stop a threat if you catch my drift.